Python Elementary School gives back to Bryn Mawr Hospital. And Radnor High School's music department presents Howell Dolly. All that and more on this weekend's edition of New Center in Radnor. Hear the one about the mom and the mechanic? They made a big splash running a car wash. See the local PTA, an auto body shop, and their community coalition organized car washes raising money to expand after school programs. They knew keeping kids busy keeps them away from drugs. So now the town's got clean cars and clean kids. What can your group do? Contact your community coalition at helpyourcommunity.org because you get more. When you get This week on New Center. In Radnor. With Michaela Connolly and Charlotte Dow. Movie review. Eric uh, Gray. Food critic. Winston Hamill. Get up close and personal with. Victoria David. And get wound up. With Sean Patney and Scott Susanna. Get cooking. With Sarah Glancy and Chelsea Connolly. With sports. Jackie Calamaro. This weekend on News Center. Hello and welcome to New Center for the week of March 9th. I'm Michaela Connolly. And I'm Victoria David. Topping the Radnor Beat this week, PTO Valentine Project Chairs Marnie Murphy and Dory Bayer led a group of Ethan Elementary School parents and students making small blankets or hugs and Valentines for sick children at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia the Ronald McDonald House, and the Bryn, Bryn Mawr Pediatric Unit for Valentine's Day. The PTO bought and paid for the materials, and the parents pre-cut the materials to make the assembly of blankets easier for little hands. After the children assembled the blankets, they got to work on the accompanying cards. A sign was posted among the 30 or so children to help with spelling and Valentine-friendly phrases, such as thinking of you, and hugs and kisses. Altogether, 40, uh, altogether, 40 hugs and 100 cards were made and delivered to the various hospitals. The hospitals and patients that received the blankets were all touched and thankful. And thankful. Great job, Ethan Elementary School. We now go to World News with Helen Shu. Helen? Thanks guys, I'm Helen Shu and this is World News. The IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, has recently reported that Iran has enough uranium to potentially create a nuclear bomb. This recent news coupled with the fact that Iran just successfully tested its first nuclear reactor in the Bush War has raised international concern over a nuclear Iran. Iran, with the capacity of launching nuclear weapons, is a matter of concern for many Western countries because of its proximity to most European countries and, most significantly, Israel. The U.S. has been forefront in trying to sanction Iran for its nuclear programs, but has failed to get the necessary votes on the Security Council. Slightly ironic, seeing how the U.S. originally helped launch Iran's nuclear program under the title Atoms for Peace. And President Shimon Peres of Israel has finally chosen Likud party leader Benjamin Netanyahu to form Israel's next governmental coalition, even though the Likud party won a grand total of one seat in the parliament in the last parliamentary election. However, under Israeli law, the president is allowed to select the party leader best suited for the job. Because of the Likud's right-wing stance, Netanyahu was chosen over Levini within, within the next six weeks. Netanyahu will be forming his coalition to be confirmed as prime minister. That's all for this week. I'm Helen Shu, and this is World News. Back to you. Thanks, Helen. Radnor High School's music department is gearing up for the spring musical. This year, Radnor's talented students will sing and dance in a production of the award-winning Broadway hit, Hello, Dolly. The performance runs this weekend, March 12th, 13th, and 14th, 
with showtimes at 7.30 p.m. nightly and a 2 p.m. Saturday matinee. All performances will be in the high school auditorium. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $15 for reserved seating. Come watch the hilarious adventures of the matchmaker, Dolly Levi, played by Julia Warner and Caitlin Richardson, as she sings and dances her way into your hearts. The other lead roles are played by Zach Alexander, John Bahar, Ian Monaco, Evan Sloan, Eric Green, Miles Locke, John Bracaglia, Margie Guy, Christy Thompson, and Maura Church, Charlotte Dow, and Ansley Sawyer. Don't miss this opportunity to see the wonderful talents of our students this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't go away, because when we return... I'll fill you in on where to get great Asian food for cheap. I'll review one of my favorite bands, Humphreys and Geek. And I review the movie that was deemed unfilmable. You know, this used to be a good neighborhood. Now it's a mess. You got all these polyps running around. Colon cancer almost always starts with the polyp. Get the polyp early and stop colon cancer before it even starts. Where did you think you were running to, huh? I didn't even see you guys there. I was... Get the test. Get the polyp. I want to talk to my lawyer! Get the cure. I got a phone call! Welcome back to News Center. We now go to this week's music review with Dan. Dan? Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite bands, Umphreys McGee. Formed in 1997 at the University of Notre Dame, Umphreys McGee has become a staple of the jam band circuit. The band is comprised of Jake Sinager on lead guitar and vocals, Brendan Bayliss on lead guitar and vocals, Ryan Stasek on bass, Chris Myers on drums, and Andy Farrag on percussion. To date, they have released five full-length studio albums with numerous live releases available. The sound is a bit hard to describe because of the amount of musical ground they cover, but any fan of rock, jam, or classic rock should feel right at home. The best part is that if you're new to them and just want to get a feel for their sound, then you can download one of their numerous podcasts of their live performances off of iTunes for free. If you decide that you like their sound, then I highly suggest that you download their third studio album, Anchor Drops which is held by many of their fans, including myself, as their best work to date. Once you've listened to that album about a few hundred times, then I suggest you look online for their next concert in Philly. Seeing them live can only be described as an experience, trust me, I know, because their mind-blowing performances are amazing. If you get tickets, then uh, expect around five hours of musical bliss, because they always play two set shows. That's all my musical advice for today. I'm Dan Pinsk, and I have musical taste, and now so do you. Thanks, Dan. Twain by the Tale, a two-act revenue of Mark Twain's stories, sketches, and monologues, opens in the black box on March 19th at 7.30 p.m. and continues March 20th and 21st, also at 7.30. A matinee will be performed on the 21st at 2 p.m., and tickets will be on sale at the door for all performances for $8. Twain by a Tale is the second production of the year presented by the Radnor Actors Workshop and contains the wit, satire, and charm that are found in all of Twain's work. Some of the most important characters include Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer, and Becky Thatcher, along with many others that enliven the world of Twain in the 19th century. The cast include the following students from the high school theater program, Ryan White, Juan Antonio Perez, Allison Beers, Julian Gao, Jenna Brown, Eugene Kim, Julie Boreski, Sienna Pegues, and Lauren Hazel. And the stage director is Danielle Alfonso Diaz. So join the Radnor Actors Workshop for Twi Twain by the Tail. We now go to Winston Hamill with this week's restaurant review. Winston? Dinner, even Sunday brunch. All I wanna do is munch, munch, munch on that beef flavored ramen. It is the best. It makes me feel so good that I wanna wear a dress. All the other flavors, they is good too. But beef flavored ramen is my real boo when I eat cup noodles. This week I visited Silk Cuisine located in Bryn Mawr across from the food source. 
It is a tasty bargain that you should definitely check out. It serves up big portions of delicious Thai food, and it has gotten good reviews from notable food critics such as Zagat's and the Philadelphia Inquirer. Their pad thai is really good and is not greasy. Also, their spring rolls are delicious and make the perfect appetizer. Most of Silk Cuisine's entrees only cost around $10, which is quite a steal. Silk Cuisine is also near the Bryn Mawr Movie Theater, so if any of you need ideas for a date, you can go to Silk Cuisine for an inexpensive dinner and then head down the road to the movie theater to complete your evening. I would recommend Silk Cuisine for anyone that likes Asian food as it is, as it is a delicious bargain. Back to you. Eichen Elementary School has discovered a painless and invaluable fundraising program in East Grip, where the Gennardi's Grocery Store in St. David's has contributed a percentage of grocery loyalty cards, credit card, and debit ATM card purchases to the school. Eichen has participated in this program since December 2002, and the PTO and students decided to thank the grocery store for its enormous help in PTO fundraising efforts by sending thank you notes. So far this year, Ethan has received nearly $6,000 from the eScript program alone. Although already happy with the money raised by this program to date, the Ethan Elementary School PTO has even more reason to be pleased. Contributions from Gennardi's will continue to flow in throughout the year, as long as the Ethan Elementary School is registered with eScript and parents shop at Gennardi's. Parents or other friends of Ethan Elementary School are urged to sign up for this program online at www.escript.com. We now go to Matt Rosen with this week's movie review. Matt? Hi, I'm Matt Rosen, movie critic for Radnor TV, and this week there's really only one film to talk about, uh, Watchmen. No other studio even thought about releasing a film up against this one. It has been said this movie would never get made, that it was impossible, and, and in many aspects it is. Uh, many directors and actors tried to tackle it, no success. It is based on the graphic novel written by Alan Moore, uh, which was published in 1986, and it has been called one of the greatest graphic novels of all time. But who would want to direct this is the real question. What director would want to put himself out on the line and probably take the biggest risk of his career? And that director is Zack Snyder, who made the very awesome remake of Dawn of the Dead in 2004 and followed up with the uh, adrenaline-fueled bloodbath that was 300. Uh, so this guy has immense talent, and now in this film he throws everything at the screen. And after all the hype and diehard Watchman fans out there, it's a very good adaptation of the graphic novel. Uh, but in that lies the problems. It's almost too good. Snyder cut out some scenes here and there, but the film is 160 minutes, adapted from a 400-page novel. And after the first hour, it starts to drag a little, but finally picks up in the last hour. Now, for those of you who haven't read the novel, uh, Watchman takes place in an alternate 1985. Uh, this is not the 1985 that we know. Uh, President Nixon continue, uh, sorry. Uh, President Nixon changes the Constitution so that he can be president longer, and he's in his fifth term. The U.S. is at war with Russia, and there's been a law passed that prevents superheroes from existing. The one exception to that law is Dr. Manhattan, uh, the only real superhero who has superpowers in the film. This guy can pretty much do anything. Uh, after a radiation experiment goes wrong, he becomes this big, blue, totally naked giant. And in flashbacks, we see how he's used to win the Vietnam War in the 60s. Uh, but the film uh, begins with the brutal murder of the comedian, uh, brilliantly played by uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And it's this murder that sparks the plot of the film and brings Rorschach into the picture. Uh, Rorschach is played by Jackie Earl Haley, uh, who gives the best performance of, out of anyone in the film. Uh, so Rorschach starts to investigate the death of his friend and believes someone is killing off costume superheroes. Uh, Haley is phenomenal in this movie. He plays... Uh, he plays a pretty twisted guy who only believes in strict justice and righteous punishment. Uh, and through this, we go from flashbacks to the present as we learn about the origins of the Watchmen and how they started. And it works. Snyder pulls it off. Uh, Dr. Manhattan is played by Bill Crudup, whose character in the film is very emotionless. He's almost a robot. Uh, but Crudup gets to the heart of a tormented man who does, in fact, have a soul. Uh, and just a heads up, of course, the film is R. There was no way to make this film and have it not be R. Uh, uh, the director, Snyder, pushes the R rating to the very max. The violence is very graphic. It's very hard to watch. It's not your cheesy Fantastic Four action, you know, Spider-Man. This is, this is past that. Uh, but now, the bad stuff. Uh, Malene Ackerman plays this superhero in the film called Silk Spectre. And as beautiful as she is, uh, she is awful in the film. She's sort of like a Cameron Diaz wannabe. Every line she utters isn't the slightest bit believable. 
Uh, another part is uh, the romance of the story between her and another watchman called Night Owl, uh, played by Patrick Wilson. Also, Patrick Wilson, he's pretty much one note the whole film, uh, and their relationship does not work. Uh, but whatever, so the film has its negative points to it, but overall it's incredibly well made despite its length. You'll never see special effects like this today. The action is great. I'm going to say most of the acting is good. So see it if you're a fan. If you're not, you know, go see it just to be interested. This is not a date movie at all. Your date will kill you if you take her to see this movie. Uh, but the unfilmable film has been made. And for that, thank Zack Snyder. He deserves all the credit and more. I'm Matt Rosen, and back to you. Thanks, Matt. Each year, the Rider Township Education Association donates Cat in the Hat books to babies born on March 2nd, Dr. Seuss's birthday, at Bryn Mawr Hospital. This year, teachers and their friends, including Dr. Linda Gorman, RTSD superintendent, decided to give hand-knitted Seuss's baby hats, along with the gift of reading. They donated their time and materials to make these hats, which were displayed outside the RMS Media Center before, the ba before being given to the babies. RMS librarian Nancy McKenzie delivered the goodies to Bryn Mawr Hospital, who were very grateful for these special gifts. That about wraps it up for this weekend's edition of News Center. I'm Mikhail Conley. And I'm Victoria David. For Winston, Matt, Dan, and Helen, and all of us here at News Center, have a great weekend, an even better week. See you next time, and go see Hello Dolly.